Okay. Yeah. Right. Our last session for this afternoon, first set of speakers, is Safrir Cohen and Talat Bathish. And it's the state of RDMA in Debian. Thank you. Okay. So, well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Talat. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, being here, even in uh, DebConf or uh, in this talk. And also, I would like to thank uh, Melanox that uh, gave me the opportunity to attend uh, DebConf. Uh, we are uh, going uh, to uh, talk about uh, RDMA uh, in Debian. We will uh, give a basic introduction uh, what is RDMA in general. Uh, and uh, we assume uh, a basic knowledge, uh, a basic previous knowledge about uh, RDMA. Uh, however, we will not go uh, deep into the protocol itself. Uh, and if you have any question about the protocol, I will uh, try to answer them uh, afterwards. You can fi find me uh, around and uh, ask me questions. Uh, then we will uh, talk about RDMA uh, in Debian in both sides, in the user space and in the kernel space. Okay. Okay. Uh, both of us are employees of Mellanox, uh, which is one of the major players in this space. Uh, of course, uh, this talk represents um, what we know, and sadly, it is a bit skewed for, uh, for uh, Mellanox hardware. Uh, of course, this talk, um, uh, in this talk, we represent ourselves and not uh, Mellanox. Uh, and yeah, let's uh, go into the talk. Okay, so what's RDMA? Uh, the meaning of the name uh, uh, Remote Direct Memory uh, Access or Remote DMA uh, that give us uh, access from one memory of a computer to another one, to the remote one, without involving uh, the CPU or the uh, OS. Um, for, for this, for this uh, support, we, have, uh, we rely on support on the hardware on the, uh, we call it a, a channel adapter or host channel adapter. Um, okay, uh, for the RDMA using a different uh, programming protocol than uh, socket, it's uh, called the uh, verbs. Um, and as you know, the, uh, <laughs> the CPU is an expensive uh, element in the data centers. And uh, we should maximize uh, the utilize of uh, the CPU and also, uh, real-time application uh, require uh, low latency and uh, consistent response. So uh, for this, we need uh, RDMA. Uh, also, the RDMA is uh, asynchronic. So that means uh, threads are not blocked. And we can, uh, while we're transferring data, we can uh, do anything else. OK. Uh, in this diagram, we can see. Uh, uh, that buffer, buffer one, we would like to transfer it from host A to host B or host one to host two. Uh, in green, we can see the flow of uh, RDMA. And uh, in the uh, orange, we can see the flow of TCP IP. Uh, the HCA and the NIC could be the same device because there's uh, devices that support uh, both uh, Ethernet and uh, uh, RDMA, for example, Rocky or IWAR, whatever. So in uh, TCP, we are copying the buffer from the application to the operation system, and from the operation system to the NIC, and on the wire, and the other side, uh, up to the application. And in RDMA, we give uh, access from the uh, memory of uh, application 1 directly to the uh, host uh, 2, without copying zero copy. RDMA uh, layers diagram, uh, I put it, all of them in, in one slide, the, both the kernel side and the user space, the kernel service and user space. Uh, in the hardware level, we can see uh, the HCA, the host channel adapter. It's a network device. And uh, on top of it, uh, there's the uh, core driver. Uh, for example, MLX5 core, uh, we are using uh, for uh, the recently Mellanox devices, 6GB for Chelsea. And uh, the IP provider driver is also in the kernel, kernel module uh, for the, uh, that uh, uh, running all the uh, API of RDMA that IP core uh, define. 
And IPO verbs is, is a chart device that communicate between the user space and the kernel space. Uh, on top of it, we can see the libmlx5, for example. It's the uh, IP provider, RDMA provider libraries in the user space that implement the libib verbs. Uh, and on top of it, there is the applications that are running RDMA uh, between them. Uh, just to clarify, uh, those may be uh, drivers for any type of, of technology. They may support, for instance, uh, Ethernet or theoretically any other technology. Uh, this layer is uh, dr uh, adapted specifically for IB InfiniBand for, for, uh, for RDMA. This is, this is uh, specifically the RDMA stack. Okay, uh, Rocky is uh, RDMA over converged Ethernet. So uh, usually the, uh, the RDMA running uh, on top of InfiniBand spec, but uh, if we have a, a Ethernet devices that support uh, Rocky, that support Rocky, yeah, we can uh, run RDMA on top of it. There's two types of uh, Rocky. Uh, in the slide we see <laughs> just Rocky V2, and there's a Rocky V1. The common one is Rocky V2, and it's this is the newest one. The difference between them, the main difference is that Rocky, one, Rocky V2 is uh, UDP based. That means it's uh, routable. And Rocky V1, it's not routable. Okay. Here's the Rocky architecture. We can see uh, how it fits the uh, RDMA diagram that we see in the, uh, pre in the, in the presentation in the past. Uh, the Ethernet NIC, the same NIC, can, is, can uh, use the TCP IP sockets and can use the RDMA uh, stack. Uh, same NIC can run at the same time uh, RDMA and uh, Ethernet traffic. Uh, soft Rocky. For you. Ah, okay. Um, well, Soft Rocky is. Rocky basically st is still something. It still uh, requires uh, support at the, at the network adapter level. So we still uh, require that uh, the network adapter, uh, <coughs> a specialized network adapter with which uh, with support for acceleration. Um, Soft Rocky um, uh, uh, replaces this with um, software emulation in both the, the kernel and in user space, in, uh, in lib -IB verbs. So um, it's, we, we still get performance that is better than, uh, we still get some benefits of RDMA, so we still may get performance that is better than, uh, than uh, plain uh, sockets, uh, plain, say, TCP or any socket-based uh, uh, program. Um, but it's still not as good as uh, using a hardware uh, device. But again, it's, it's all you get. And as we can show later, it's much uh, simpler to set up. If it's the only thing you can have if you don't uh, have the hardware. OK, this is how, uh, how SoftRocky fits in the, in the, in the, in the scheme. So you can see that uh, this is basically any, any network adapter. It doesn't have to support. Uh, it doesn't have to support. Uh, uh, it doesn't have to have any specialized support. Um, there is this is the support in the user space in libib verbs. It's uh, it's the uh, provider the, the plugin for, uh, of libib verbs. Again, in the kernel under uh, IB Core, uh, there is uh, a driver for it, and this driver uh, talks with the with the standard uh, uh, Ethernet driver. But it should support PFC priority flow control for reliability. Uh, yeah. Okay, RDMA process flow. In RDMA, we uh, call a client or server. There is no client and server. There is an initiator or target, a requester and some uh, responder. Uh, so uh, there is the memory region. It's a binded memory that uh, binded for uh, some application. Uh, all the RDMA works done uh, with queues. Uh, 
the QP is a Q pair, send Q and receive Q, that uh, hosts all the work queues that we would do like to uh, the hardware to perform. And uh, the, com the completion queue is uh, hosted all the completion elements all, uh, that, uh, that already done. When hardware finished with, uh, with the work queue, he put for us a completion queue element, and uh, we get it in the application as a, a completion. Uh, a completion. Um, RD, the, the most common RDM operation is uh, send receive, RDMA read, and RDMA write, uh, and uh, atomic is there. okay. There is also the InfiniBand spec. Uh, I put a link for the InfiniBand spec if uh, someone would like to uh, read specs, so uh, you can uh, download and read. Uh, now we are going to see a demo between uh, bet RDMA versus uh, Ethernet. Uh, in the demo, there is uh, two servers, it's my servers, uh, connected uh, with 100 gigabit per second between them. The device is Ethernet, but it supports uh, RDMA. Uh, the traffic is uh, with the message size of uh, 64 kilobyte, and uh, the traffic generators that I use, iPerf for, R uh, iPerf for TCP, and uh, IP write bandwidth for, uh, for RDMA. Trust me, I, I know that it's <laughs> you cannot see it from uh, your seat. Okay, but, uh, so um, now this we are okay. Okay, okay. This is um, this is a single. This is I iPerf uh, again. A simple uh, per TCP performance te test. Traffic generator. Traffic yeah. generator. Yeah, uh, and we run here a single thread. What we can see is we can see. <laughs> and some of you can see. Trust me, <laughs> this is the number. Uh, for a single thread, we get to uh, 22 gigabytes, and the CPU util utilization is, again, we, there is some CPU utilization. It's not. Uh, yeah, there is uh, one CPU there is core some that it's fully utilized. Uh, yeah, on one thread. So. Here we do the same, basically. Yeah, but we get in on 100 gigabit per second uh, uh, Ethernet device, we get just 22 g uh, gigabit okay, Ethernet. Uh, 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 in order to okay. get more, we have to run more threads. So we run eight threads in order to get the full bandwidth. We get here uh, 94 gigabit per second, but all the CV all eight cores fully utilized. Because we are running eight threads, so eight, th eight uh, uh, cores are re uh, really fully utilized. Okay, now we are running a single thread of uh, IB write bandwidth. Can you make the letter bigger? Uh, no, no, because it's, not, it's, it's a video, but we'll try to, to repeat this. I will, at, I will show end. you the video again. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, if we have a time, we can do a live demo, but not on those machines we don't, we don't, don't have access to them. Uh, okay, this is a single thread of uh, IP write bandwidth running the same message size. I, I don't want to talk about the latency because also we, uh, here we get a, a, a better latency, but we can see the uh, bandwidth that it's 92 gigabit per second without utilize uh, even once the CPU. All the CPU cores is uh, free. Kay. Okay, now we are going to RDMA in Debian. Uh, in the kernel side, so the RDMA subsystem development is uh, usually upstream first. So therefore, uh, Debian kernel is up to date, aligned to the kernel that we based on. So the all the drivers of uh, RDMA are uh, in the directory drivers in Finiband, and the provider's code is uh, drivers also in drivers in Finiband hardware, and there you can find all the uh, provider's uh, kernel modules. Uh, user space. Uh, the user space, nowadays we have the RDMA core user space package, the libraries and daemons. Uh, a few years ago, uh, this package uh, reorganized uh, instead of around uh, 20, 20 small repositories for the different providers, uh, we gather them in one git tree that named uh, RDMA core. Uh, it's, 
this, this, this package introduced to ease the acceptance and the review for uh, all the uh, new features uh, and uh, code. Uh, there's a group of maintainers uh, to speed up the acceptance and the review via the same mailing list for user space and uh, kernel space. Uh, th this is the mailing list. If you uh, would like, someone would like to uh, report the bugs on or uh, 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 post some uh, new features, you are welcome. Uh, and the Debian packaging is uh, done on the same Git repository upstream. Uh, that's it. Uh, and just to stress, um, this is new in Buster. So uh, mm -hmm. before Buster, we had the uh, uh, in Stretch, we still had the older version of those libraries. Uh, it was added in, in Stretch but backports. Yeah. So uh, this is one new feature, new interesting feature of uh, of Buster. And also, yeah, uh, I think. It may be interesting to, to even report, I'm not sure about uh, bug reports, it may be interesting to report bugs directly upstream or uh, there are few bug reports on the Debian packaging, yeah. Also it's include a Python library for developing RDMA, if uh, someone would like to develop uh, with the Python, so there is a li uh, uh, Python library uh, to okay. RDMA. Uh, Yeah, it's okay. So inside Malamax of uh, targz that you used before, there were missing some uh, binary packages like Malamax config in order to uh, change the firmware to enable virtual functions and things like that. So are you including all of them right no. now? No, because this is a vendor specific. For example, uh, in order to change some configuration uh, for Malamax devices, you need, for example, MST Flint package. So it's... Uh, uh, no. No, it's not in the same uh, Git repository, but st it's also in Debian. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Like, where is it? Um, it's under. Uh, okay, J just to clarify, M MST Flint, for instance, is in is included as a separate package. Um, there is a, a large uh, software distribution which uh, I'm. I happen to be. Uh, both of us are sort of part of its uh, packagers inside Mellanox. It's called Mellanox Offed. Um, it includes a whole lot of uh, other tools. Some, are, uh, some of it are proprietary uh, and a bunch of uh, drivers, some of which can't be upstream for various reasons. We, we and um, we try to reduce its size and uh, some of the tools there are, are not included in, in, in Debian and, and other distributions. But MST Flint, it's included in Debian. And uh, also, there's a new tools in MST Flint itself for configuration like MST config and uh, MLX firmware recently. Thank you. Other tools, here's MST Flint. Perf <laughs> uh, test is a, a, a couple of uh, performance tests that uh, are running uh, RDMA it's also could be used as examples for uh, developing uh, RDMA. InfiniBand Diax is a set of utils uh, for uh, design and uh, configure debug uh, InfiniBand uh, libraries uh, and fair fabric. OpenSM, if you are running InfiniBand, you need a subnet manager. So OpenSM is the package that providing the uh, subnet manager. And uh, MST Flint, uh, for example, it's for, for Manox, it's uh, for uh, burning a new firmware or uh, configuring the device to, uh, to be a VPI, to be InfiniBand or to be Ethernet, so you need uh, a, a, a burning tool, uh, configuration tools. Okay, uh, RDMA is set up in uh, a machine that uh, running Debian, so you need just to install the RDMA code, the IP providers, and uh, the IP verbs utils. If you are running Rocky, there is no needed any uh, configuration, just uh, set an IP to the interface, and you can uh, get uh, uh, Rocky V2 and Rocky V1 uh, working. And uh, in Finiba, if you are running InfiniBand, if there is no OpenSM running on the subnet, even in the switch or in uh, one of the hosts, 
that uh, connected to the fabric, so need to install the OpenSM package and uh, run OpenSM. So what's missing in Debian? Um, as far as I know, there is no relationship between, uh, between the providers, the RDMA providers and Debian. So there is no certifications, no tests. Uh, and it's a bit complicated to, uh, to do something like that because you need to lend the hardware and uh, put it on uh, a physical machines and uh, this is a bit complicated. Uh, in the kernel side, there is no backport uh, or fixes to the stable, to the, LTA, to the uh, LTS uh, releases. Uh, so also, uh, this is missing and uh, should, uh, we should do something uh, there. Uh, now we are going to give a live demo uh, uh, for SoftRocky. Uh, it's an emulation of uh, RDMA device in uh, software. So uh, I think everyone can run uh, Rocky on uh, his laptop. So it's a good uh, utility for students or for someone that would like to start uh, to developing uh, RDMA. So it's a good start. Okay. So basically, uh, those two systems uh, here uh, are running Camu, plain Camu. Uh, each has two network interfaces. Uh, I set up really, really simple. Uh, I can post the the configuration scripts uh, later. But basically, there is um, one network interface that is configured with the uh, NetDev user and one network interface uh, so I can uh, SSH from the host and one network interface uh, which is configured with um, the, what the SSH calls a socket so I can uh, connect between the, uh, the two machines. Uh, all plain user space, uh, nothing so and, and this also means uh, as I use a socket and nothing more fancy, this means that uh, I can't get uh, great performance here, but it's, it's simple and it, good, it gives a good uh, uh, demonstration. So, um, uh, right now, uh, basic configuration is of Rocky. You still need to, uh, to, to, to configure something. Um, yeah. Okay. So, oh, so it's, it's okay. It's already configured. Uh, basically, what I needed to do uh, there is a tool called uh, RxE CFG. Um, so basically, RxE CFG. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, nothing too complicated here. Uh, start uh, loads a bunch of modules. So uh, if those modules are not already loaded, then start or load those modules yourself. Uh, I, I got the thing loaded with uh, some systemd script that... Uh, f but again, uh, I could have just used manually rxccfg start. And then RxCFG CFG um, add and the network name of the device ETH ETH1. That's it. Okay. So this means that uh, I have uh, that uh, I have uh, Rocky configured uh, a Rocky device uh, attached to this uh, Ethernet device. So. Um, and let's look at the other system. And again, uh, those uh, those are cards that are uh, connected to each other di directly with uh, with the cable directly. Um, so. Uh, okay. Um, IPv uh, 
Okay. IPV uh, RC ping pong is uh, comes comes from uh, yeah uh, comes from uh, from the package. Uh, My battery is okay. Uh, nice. Okay, let's see. Set up a few things. Okay, hang on. I have a question concerning security. Uh, are there any concerns about having direct access to the memory of another machine? Were there problems in the past with security? And, um, security? <laughs> yeah, all the time there is uh, security issues. But I, I'm not aware of uh, security issues in, uh, in InfiniBand because there is a base domain. That maintain the that control the the pages that you allocate, and there is a key, and you can you, you get a virtual address, and with the key you can translate it to a physical address. So you need the key in order to access this uh, this page or this address in the hardware. If you don't have the key, how do you can uh, get access to this uh, uh, to this page or to this address? And you develop your own application. You should care of the security. From the InfiniBand spec, it's, it's well secured. But um, if I write an application that tries to access memory on the other machine that it should not, then the remote machine cannot say you are not allowed to access this. It depends on the, uh, it depends on the RDMA uh, connection that you are going to use, for example. If you are going to RDMA read or RDMA write, you are di directly write to this on the remote host. If you are using, for example, post send over, you should post, before you should post a, a receive request, and uh, you should also kind of three-way handshake that you would tell the other application where you would like this data to be written. So you have, a, you have an address and key. We do more questions. Very simple. Um, uh, that's a very simple uh, RDMA uh, tool. Um, ping pong. Um, it works. Uh, performance is not stellar, but uh, it works. It's running on top of laptop. Yeah, and 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 I didn't use any any type of acceleration within uh, KM, within KVM. Um, okay. Um, can should we uh, try the, uh, the the real servers? Should we see something or more questions? Okay, let's. Uh, so, first question: Is this uh, Rocky V2 based on UDP, and that's why you did it on software, and there wasn't before? 
it, you are talking about the software? Yeah, the software version. Is it UDP you can, based? You, you can check. It depends on the uh, Git that we are running on. But it's Rocky V2, right? Yeah. OK, so. OK. Um, here, OK. If you ask about the, the, uh, the application that we run, yeah, it was uh, Rocky V2. And the second question is, do you have uh, IBM created a wrapper library to use RDMA transparently? So you basically preload a library and you use like if it was a TCP IP socket. The do you have anything similar to that? So you don't have to handle the RDMA protocol? Uh, we have something like that, but not directly on top, but not on top of RDMA. There is something that is uh, on top of Mellanox uh, hardware, I believe. It's uh, lib libvma, right? This is the application. This but is the acceleration yeah. tools. No, I don't run any optim any performance optimizations and any performance utils or so. Uh, it's native. Thank you. Installed from stretch. Thank you for the presentation. It was so interesting and uh, inspiring. Uh, I want to know whether you compare the result of the uh, Rocky soft Rocky with uh, the normal IPERF in terms of packet per second or not. Mm -hmm. We are not um, from the marketing or from the sales uh, team, uh, but we can uh, do it together. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, machines with soft rocky, and also we have machines with uh, real RDMA, and we can compare it together. Okay. It's okay. Uh, or uh, the comparison in the terms of megabits per second. Uh, do you have a soft RC, soft rocky VS, the uh, normal kernel stack? Because you said that uh, soft rocky is a bit better than the kernel stack, uh, I want to know whether you have the numbers ready or not. Mm. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, I think. Uh, yeah, we. Ah, okay. Yeah, we can compare it. We can have running, for example. Uh, um, Traffic generator tool that running, for example, 64 uh, kilobyte uh, data between two servers, and uh, we can see how many packets we do we transfer fro with the uh, Ethernet and how many packets we transfer with SoftRocky or with RDMA. But uh, for now, the numbers are not ready. We can do it uh, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, another question: I want to know whether you have compared this with something like uh, NTOP's PF ring or not. Because PF ring also uh, bypasses the kernel stack, and you can directly access the packets from the networks and network adapters memory. Uh, I want to know whether there is such a comparison or not. I don't have uh, other vendors or other, uh, uh, for example. Uh, but I, I, sorry, I, I didn't hear what's the provider that you. Uh, and top. I don't have any other provider equipment, so I cannot say that I compare. So I didn't compare. But uh, if you are running on top of a uh, NIC that support uh, 100 gigabit per second, and you get uh, 94 gigabit per second without utilizing the CPU, I think that th this is enough. Without any CPU, without any performance uh, optimization. So Thank you very much. I don't care what the other side has. Because my <laughs> my equipment is very good. But uh, whenever you provide a new approach and uh, we have deal uh, we deal with the numbers, there is uh, always interesting in the benchmarks to have the uh, other vendors or uh, other we similar approach number two for the comparison. I ask uh, only with some point of view. I would like to avoid to talking instead of Melanox, but I will. So, uh, we, when I say we, that's uh, Melanox. Uh, we have uh, all the results on the Melanox website. You are more than welcome to uh, visit the website and download them, review them, and uh, give me your uh, feedback. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, just in regards to your uh, question, in regards to the optimization, yes, I do just 
one thing that it's the uh, no PTI, uh, no page isolation. Just to be, to be honest. <laughs> Want, let, let's try to repeat uh, the demo. Uh, okay. Servers. Um. This is not the same uh, servers. It's also servers that they have uh, a RDMA unique. Uh, okay. okay. So um, let's see. Uh, <coughs> get a uh, reasonable output. Okay, so uh, this uh, right now we have just one interface that is up. Um, this script IPDev to NetDev is currently not included in the uh, not included in the uh, um, in Debian. Um, we borrowed it from the from Mellanox uh, offered, but we find it a bit too useful. So we should at some point uh, just uh, push it upstream. It's it's a, it's a big shell script. Uh, it's a simple bash script. Yeah. <laughs> that show the show, shows the mapping, map of yeah. the devices from uh, RDMA devices to the yeah. Ethernet devices. So, uh, <coughs> okay, we were running first uh, iperf. That's a uh, single set. Is this uh, readable enough? Okay. So that's a uh, single thread. Um, and you can see the, the CPU utilization. Um, again, the, the results seem to vary from one run to another. Uh, now I run it with, uh, for instance, eight, uh, uh, eight threads. Um, uh, uh, he asked if we're running, if we're using a TSO, if we're off offloading. Um, yeah, because the no. checksums and and the. Frames would be constructed by the NIC, right? So it's unfair because I, I mean, if you are not using TSO, of course you would use lots of CPUs. You know, that's what I. Um, okay. Um, and I have a last question. I swear. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what about? I'm really interested in the packages you are not putting upstream. And I explain why. I'm from Canonical, and let's say if I don't want to use Mellanox or Fed because it's hard for me to support Canonical. So let's say I want to support, uh, you know, my kernel, and your Mellanox or Fed has DK, DKMS modules, for example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you re-implement Netlink things that would break compatibility with my kernel, right? So I would like to use my stack, and I cannot right now because 
uh, you know, as I already said, there are some tools that are really uh, important for Mellanox cards that are not upstream. And I, it's hard for me to tell someone, you know, like a final user, oh, go and install Mellanox, which I don't disagree because it's your development model, you know. Yeah. But uh, okay. I would like them to be up, upstream. Okay, I will answer the question different. So I will tell you what's the difference between Mellanox software and the kernel drivers that we have okay. in the upstream. There's uh, some verbs that it's, uh, in, it's in offered and it's not in uh, upstream and we are going to get rid of them in the next releases. And also there is a backport. For example, in order to make this feature that already today in upstream 5.2 works on, uh, for example, uh, Ubuntu 6 Xenial 16.4 with kernel 4.4. So uh, these, uh, these features requires also parts from the kernel, for example, from the net schedule, okay? And we should backport all of these, uh, all of these features. We cannot do it in upstream. We cannot backport all the features in upstream. To, so we can do it in our package. We doing, a, for example, MLX compat that uh, handle all the needed uh, functions or functionality from the kernel for each operation system. Uh, it's generic, and um, this is why you are, we are why we are using or we are developing Mellanox software just for customers that have yeah. uh, that that have a, an old operation system and they also would like to develop uh, with the newest features of uh, RDMA. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to keep up with like w several backports you do in the Mellanox software to fix bugs because you know there is no Git versioning on them, for example, you know and also the tools that were missing source codes. But uh, apart from that, I, uh, I, I totally see what you're saying, and it's really hard to keep up with all the features. Uh, Mellanox develops too quickly in the kernel, so sometimes uh, recent versions already, like flow steering, for example, which we had to back forward. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I do understand that. Thank you, and last it's question. Okay. <laughs> Is it question time now? Seems so. <laughs> um, I have a question from IRC. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, he asks, or the person asks, does this have similar your network firmware can spy on you implication as in smartphones? In other words, can the network hardware read or write memory the CPU did not intend it to? Um, Could you please repeat that? Um, can the network hardware read or write memory the CPU does not intend it to? Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, but again, uh, the, the, there is initial setup of, of memory regions, right? Yeah, there's a memory region that it's binded for the application. And it's a registered memory. That it's not, uh, uh, we are not doing uh, anything that's illegal. So it's binded memory for the application and it's I mean, a memory region. I mean, think, think about um, support for, uh, for DMA that also needs to work with, uh, with virtual, virtual uh, machines. So, uh, through IOMMU and such, this is not, this is not, this problem is not unique to, yeah, to, uh, to our DMA. Right, more questions? Closing comments from presenters. Okay. No. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and the final note: uh, we hope to see you all next year in Haifa. Yeah. Next year we are the conference in Haifa. <laughs>